You the second camera going? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to do it so you can't see the crap in my room first. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Right. Too. Don't worry too much about that. You're already ready because I'll, I'll. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Good I'm ready. Give me a sec. Get out, everyone. Welcome back to Porsche Talk Podcast. It's been a little while since Ajmal and I have caught up. There's a lot going on in both our lives, so let's catch up and see what's happening. Get out, Ajmal. How are you today? I'm, I'm good. Yeah, he has. It feels like it's been absolutely ages. And I, I was just thinking about the stuff. I mean, you've been globetrotting, let alone just, you know, day to day life. For me, I was thinking, oh, yeah, there's all of these things that have happened and I need to talk about them. But then the stuff that you've been doing and people obviously would have seen it on social media. Wow. I mean, what was it like? <laughs> well, look, I'll give you some interesting statistics, but they're going to be in relevant to the metric system, you know, which you guys have to in the UK. Um, yep. The trip involved the following distances. Over the, I was, to give you an idea, I was away for 27 days from home. Yep. We flew by aircraft 37,000 kilometres. We okay. drove 6,082 kilometres. Oh, wow. And walked... 196 kilometers during that time. And now, have you got the conversions to miles that most normal people No one measuring? understands how that works. Okay, so 196 kilometers of walking adds up to about a hundred. What's that? Uh, um, where are we at? 200 K, 120 miles, I'll be about. Right? Okay. There and about. So these are rough, obviously. Uh, the 37,000 kilometres, about 25,000 miles. Okay, wow. Flying. And the driving of 6,080 kilometres was, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, was 6,000, 6, oh, th- about 3,750 miles. Okay, so now tell us where you went. What was the purpose of the journey? Yeah, 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 great. So uh, we flew from Perth to JFK, which is literally the other side of the globe, both by longitude and latitude. It's a 24-hour flight, Ajma. And uh, from there, we went uh, up north to Maine, a little town called York. So actually, we actually drove from New York to York and from spent a bit of time there. Then headed back down south towards a place called Lancaster in Pennsylvania, which is an amazing rural part of Pennsylvania, which we went for quite a specific reason for my wife, as we did to up into uh, York. And from there, we then travelled south to a place called Pigeon Forge in the, just on the edge of the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. On the way, I managed to get myself a speeding fine which I could not wrangle my way out of. This guy was by the letter of the law. There was no negotiation, I can tell you. I was doing, um, off memory, 84 in a 70 zone. Yo, uh, and you couldn't tell me where I fit. Look, in, in all reality, I don't, look, I was, we were in a high car, a Honda HRV, like a compact SUV that is just like destroys your yeah, soul every time roll. you sit in it, you know. <laughs> and I was wringing the neck out of it, but that, I wasn't going much faster than the flow of traffic. Like if, if I was doing 84, traffic was doing 82, you know, so I got, I feel like I was unfairly pinged, but regardless, cop that one. Uh, you had an amazing time at Smoky Mountains, drove Tale of the Dragon three times. In, in, the, in the Honda. In the Honda. In the Honda. Look, I'll be straight up with you. I'd love to drive it in a performance car, but I don't think it'll make much difference in the actual speed because the corners are just coming on like interest. It's thick and fast that no one's going that fast through it. You know, it was an ama- amazing experience. Now, I know there are better driving roads in that area, that but Tale of the Dragon is one of those iconic roads. It's like, you know, going to Germany and not driving the Nürburgring. How do I not done it? Yeah, you because know, I, I hear about that people say there's better driving roads in and around there, um, and I always hear about the corners. It's either you make the corner or you die. 
<laughs> you just think, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, look, that, that was a great experience. I'm glad I, I did experience it. It won't be my last time there or to that region because as a family we had an amazing time in Tennessee, which I'll – which was really amplified at the next location after that part of uh, the, when we left this. Oh, actually, before we left the Smokies, we did a lot of hiking and stuff around there too and uh, saw some black bears out in the wild, which was a bit of a thrill, as you can imagine. Then headed down to Nashville. Now, I don't know if you've been to Nashville, Ajmal, and if you haven't, you should go. No. Nope. It is an amazing place. Like, it is a great party town, all the honky-tonk bars down Broadway. It was – we had a cracker of a time. I cannot wait to go back. Now, I'm not a big fan of country music. Yeah, there's plenty of country music we all like. There's some classics out there that we all know and acknowledge and can't help but tap our foot to, right? But – Do you know what's when? When you're fully immersed in it, it's incredible. You know, like – Everyone else is the place is pumping. It's yeah, it was a great experience. I, I can't I highlight of the trip down to Nashville. So a couple of things for me is that when I think of uh, Tennessee, yes, I always think the song Tennessee by Prince. Yes, we should have had that at the beginning. Yes, uh, country and western. I, I don't get m- more country and western than Shania Twain. Uh, and when you said bears, uh, last night I watched the movie Cocaine Bear. Really? <laughs> yeah. So um, that, that, every time I, I someone says bear now, I think Cocaine Bear, um, which I don't know if anybody knows, but it's loosely based on real events where a bear gets high on cocaine. <laughs> um, but also, I've only ever been to New York. Ah. Once, and that was eleven years ago. Oh, we spoke about um, it. we've spoken about the podcast before with you getting put through the ringer yes. trying to get into the country. Yeah, and and in in other news, I'm going next month. Really? Yeah, uh, I'm going, and it's for work. I'm going to Vegas for a week. Well, I'll um, come to Vegas in a moment. So from Nashville, <laughs> we then flew to Denver because there's a big part in the middle of America, which I know there are some listeners that probably come from this part of the USA that I don't want to offend, but it's there's not a lot of act, not a lot to look at and not a lot of activity with regards to the driving roads through that middle part, okay, through New Mexico or Kansas or that part, as I'm sure those that live there will acknowledge. So we flew to Denver, picked up another high car, Convertible Mustang, like a you know a good tourist story. Nice. Yes, yes, and drove Eco- EcoBoost. EcoBoost, of course, of course, of course. Everything's EcoBoost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, and then drove over Independence Pass down into Aspen, beautiful place, and where I, for those mm. that haven't seen my post, was ambushed literally by a flock which is the collective noun, of McLarens. And they were hot pinging motor cars from getting the wheels driven off them. And when I say McLarens, I'm talking there were two F1s, which I'd never seen in real life, but yeah, out in the wild. Whoa. And they were, you couldn't touch the engine cover. There was that much heat coming off them, right? So that's how hard they were getting driven. Mm-hmm. There was... I think four or five centers. There was four or five P ones. There was a center GDR. There were, I think, there were four P one oh. GTRs. So, bloody it, hell! Yeah, In we're one place. serious heavyweight motor motor cars here that just appeared while we we're, you know, in Aspen going to look for some dinner. It was wow. Yeah, it was mind blowing for me because I'd. Yeah, you know, never seen an F one in the flesh. You know, it was or in the middle. It was amazing experience and reinforced that how good cars of that era were because they were human sized instead of the spaceship sized cars that modern cars are. Like you see an yeah. F one parked next to a Senna, and you could probably park the F one in the passenger seat. Yeah, it's insane how big they've got. It's, it's mad. When's it going to stop? 
when the roads get too small? They're already there. They're already yeah, there. Um, well, certainly where I live. Yeah, yeah. And then so from there, Aspen went to Aspen, Moab, Utah, which a bit of a bucket list place for me being an old bike rider. Had to ride the Slick Rock mountain bike trails around there. It was a, I'd have to say, 30 plus years of aspiring to go there one day to ride mountain bikes. It was a little bit emotional, you know, having one of those experiences that you wow. look forward to for such a long period of time. And the trails were bloody brutal, right? <laughs> um, how tough they were to ride. I rode on an e-mountain bike and I'm telling you, I still cop the flogging. Not that I'm overly fit bike riding wise at the moment, but regardless, it the guys that did it in the 90s on those bikes back then, uh, they're superheroes. Those guys deserve a cape yeah, with how tough that mountain biking is around wow. that area. But, yeah, stunning part of the world. What Mark, was the heat? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I think it was about was, the day I went out, it was probably only about 32, 33 degrees Celsius. So it wasn't, you know, by Perth standards, normal bike riding weather. You know, by English standards, heat wave, people melt in the street, burst into flames, that type of thing. Not English terms, you mean normal human terms other than <laughs> Australia. <laughs> well, clearly not Moab terms because that was just a normal day in Moab, right? Then uh, oh, from there we headed south down through Monument Valley just so we could see where every cowboy film that was ever made was shot. <laughs> you know, and uh, nice. and it was it was pretty amazing. Then following that we drove to the south rim of Grand Canyon, the Grand Canyon village we stayed at. Now, I know Grand Canyon's big. I'd never been there before. It's called Grand Canyon, so I knew it was going to be big, right? <laughs> a bloody hell, Ashmel. Big doesn't do it justice. It needs a bigger word than big. I don't know, like grand? I don't know. It was just <laughs> incredible how large it was. I was blown away by the scale of the thing. It was just how evil can evil thought it was a good idea to take some sort of jet plane and try and launch it over the top back in the uh, late seventies, oh, early eighties? I got no idea, but it was a yeah amazing experience. <laughs> and, um, oh wow! Then went to Vegas. We drove to Vegas from there, and oh, don't put me off. It's going to go. Oh, look, this is my third trip to Vegas. I think. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's my third time. Mate, the joint's flogged. It is tired. Everyone's walking around like a zombie. It is. It needs the Formula One. It needs something to rejuvenate the place. And when I say that, I'm not talking about, oh, look, the buildings, a lot of the older hotels are tired as well, but there's plenty of capital investment being put into place. But down the what's now the main part of the strip, not the old part of the strip, yeah, it's, yeah she's copped the flogging. You know, it's, uh, it, looks, it looks like uh, one of those – versions of Vegas you see in a, a uh, independent film, not the Hollywood version of Ocean's Eleven. Oh. See, I, I've i been – because everyone who's been tells me it's like a, a two- to three-day city, so you go so you go there for two to three days. Oh, no. But I'm going for work, so I have to go there for like eight days. I'm there. Oh, man. Honestly, 24 hours is, a, is enough. Eight days. Well, yeah, well, I guess I won't. I guess I won't be out partying. I'll be working no, so I can hide in hotels. Look, Ajmal, in Vegas, I tell you, it's firstly, there's the only type, there's two types of food in Vegas to eat. There's Michelin star. Yep. And there is. Or buffet. Then there's troughs. Okay. <laughs> there's nothing in the middle. You know, so like, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Is And. Uh, She's pretty long flight from UK for you. You know, that's a... 11 hours. That's That'll be the longest flight I've ever taken. Are you kidding me? No, 11 hours. Well, so, okay. And, so, uh, it, and, and also, so your your day is extended on the way from here to there. Yeah, but you get robbed of um, right? on the way. Uh, well, when I, when I get there, I think I get there at 8 o'clock in the evening. But my day is so extended, I'll have been awake for a really long time by that point. Um, and on the way back, it's oh, no, I think I leave at something like uh is it? No, I think my my yeah, because I think on the way back, 
doesn't it? Oh, I don't know. No, but look, I might have worked it out. Give you an idea. I flew from Perth to Canberra on a three and a half hour flight, but it takes like seven hours out of my day at the moment because of the time difference. Oh, you know. Okay. Anyway, that aside, the and then from there we drove to LA via Route sixty six. Oh, how was that? It's just an old crappy road. That's what I thought you'd say. That's what most people who've been yeah. down it say. Yeah, yeah, but it's, oh, well, it was good because we stopped at like an old, there's a 50s diner along the way we stopped at and, you know, it's got some souvenirs with root, old rusty Route 66 signs put up in the garage, that sort of stuff, you know, so it was a bit yeah. of fun, you know, and we're on holiday, so it would have made 15 minutes difference between in our travel time compared to travelling the freeway, you know, so in the scheme of things. Oh, you know, okay. Big deal. Uh, the... We arrived in LA at exactly the wrong time of the week, Saturday afternoon, where the worst traffic of the week exists. And LA has a lot of traffic, oh of which I only contributed by do- being in it. Yes. So the the once we got to LA, we actually stayed in West Hollywood, which is a bit of a it's a, ni- a nice part of LA, not far from Santa Monica. But LA as a town is about one fiftieth as glamorous as it's made out to be in media uh, and cinema. Okay, so it's yeah, that's disappointing. Oh, look, it is what it is. But I got a lot of unfinished business in LA. There's a lot of businesses I want to go and visit. I went in and saw the guys at RDB LA, who I'm a pretty big fan of their. YouTube channel, so I went and said day to them because they were just down the road on Sunset from where we were staying. So that was quite a, just a happy coincidence. The So we spent a few days there. Then we drove down to Anaheim, which is like in central LA region, to go to Disneyland for a couple of days. I, st- I wanted to go whilst I was still young enough. Mm-hmm. Anaheim it sounds like it's somewhere in Asgard. That's Jodenheim. <laughs> and uh, I'm a comic, comic name. Yeah, that that was a that was a hoot. And then from there we drove up to Monterey for Rensport Reunion Seven. Oh my god! And that's where it got really cool. Oh yeah, it was amazing. It was I had high expectations. It's Rensport Reunion for Christ's sake, and they haven't had one for a while because of COVID, and you know, but. I knew there was going to be a lot of good cars there. I didn't know there was going to be this many good cars there. Mm. You know, it was <laughs> like it's Ren Sport reunion, so I was expecting a lot of, you know, factory race cars. I lost count. Like there had to be a hundred factory race cars there, I smell. That's not including oh, wow. generation Carrera Cup style 992 things, right? I'm talking I think Group C cars, you know, the old 951s, 962s, that type of thing. Just in those two generations, there must have been 20. Wow. Yeah, you see one, it just blows the top off your head, but these are all, these are racked up. You know, it was just amazing. How how long is the event? How many days? Uh, Four days. I attended two days of it. And it's and it's one of those where from the people who went, you know, anyone I've messaged on Instagram and stuff, they've said it's it's mind bogglingly huge. The event you can't get around it in two days. Um, I feel like I saw ninety five percent of everything I needed to. What um, was that five percent? The Doobie Brothers. Yeah, I missed that. But you know, the Doobie Brothers, that was a once in a lifetime chance. Yeah, but you know what? I reckon the Doobie Brothers might have missed it as well, or they just don't remember it. I see. You would have, you would have, you would have to stay till the end to hear, you know, long running train or something. In the evenings, the place winds down pretty hard. You know, you got, you got to consider the core demographic that attends Ren Sport, which is you, me, our listeners, okay, are of a certain, uh, narrow bandwidth of age and uh, affluence. Okay, what are you saying about all of our hot young listeners? <laughs> and as a what result, are you saying? once once it gets a bit cold and a bit uncomfortable, 
you, you reach a time in your life, you think, nah, fuck it, I'm going inside. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think there may not have been the 80,000 people that attended Rensport on Saturday all there to watch the Doobie Brothers at the, at the end of the evening. Uh, yep. Okay. That's an assumption because I, I didn't attend myself, but I would be very surprised because when I was leaving, people were leaving in droves. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the, that was what – were you there on the on the last day? Or no, no, was I was, there, the I was there on the Friday and Saturday. Sunday was the last day. Right. Uh, okay. So everyone started head home. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it was wow. a – it was a – it was eye-opening for me how big Porsche is in the USA. Now I knew it was big. I know it's 50% of their sales. But I know all these statistics, but until you actually see it, it's it's pretty amazing. Yep. Like, unfortunately, to a degree, our accommodation was very near the airport. It's, it's in Monterey Peninsula. Mm. And oh, nice. in the mornings before the event opens at about 8 a.m., I think it was, there may have been a parade of Gulf Streams coming in in the mornings. Oh, like oh wow. Lined up, bang, 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 bang. It just didn't stop for an hour, you know what I mean, of planes landed five minutes after each other. Wow. Do you reckon that was Patrick Dempsey and his friends and his fans? Oh, I've got some good news about Patrick, but we'll save that for another episode. I want to talk to you about it. Okay. The yes. um, I saw plenty of friends of the podcast, which was – to all those to those of you listening out there, I was very grateful. Thank you for coming to say good day and um, introducing yourself. Uh, Ajmal, to give you some perspective, I would say across the two days, I would have had between 80 and 100 listeners come and say hello to let us know how much they enjoyed. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it was amazing. And uh, I feel very grateful for the um, platform that we're given to speak the rubbish we do on a regular basis. <laughs> no, that is amazing. That is that makes me feel good. Yeah, you know? yeah, because um, that was one of the things I thought. That, you know, it, all that way, um, and such a gathering of people. Wouldn't it be amazing if you saw as many people as possible? That is mind blowing. Yeah, and I saw I saw some uh, ex some guests we've had in the past. I caught up with uh, Bernard Moix, who you might remember. Oh, nice, Clara, to yes, do yes. the uh, Milia, who we had on twice. I caught. I actually. Bumped in him twice during the uh, two days, and also such an interesting guy. Yeah, he was fascinating. He still is, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and also I actually bumped in him the first time at the three five six reunion, which was an event that was in the next valley on the Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon. But yeah, no, Saturday afternoon. Yeah, so I, I went over and saw, caught up with him on. Uh, there and caught up with a lot of we, I, we we actually have a lot of listeners of the podcast from the 356 fraternity that were there because I would say out of the 80 to 100 people who come and say good day to me when they saw me 40 would have been at the Rensport reunion at the sorry the 356 re- oh, reunion wow. yeah so plenty of 356 listeners and uh of an age bracket that is probably a generation beyond ours Wow, that's that is cool. Yeah. I think we need to we need more three five six content. I think we do. Uh, there was a lot of people asking why is Najmal here. Yeah, I did not. I did not plan next year. Next year. But how about in five years when it's on again? No, we'll we'll, we'll just we'll just go there anyway. We'll go and do you know corkscrew. We'll do car week. We'll just car week. Yeah, exactly. We'll go, you know, we'll go same JFK, buy buy some heap and head across. I've I've got aspiration for the next Rensport reunion to ship my three five six over and drive it cross country. Drive to Oh my god. Ship it to LA, go up to Rensport Reunion, go right up north to Oregon and stuff like that. Maybe drive across the top or then ship it across to uh somewhere like New Orleans and do my go across to Miami and go up the East Coast, something like that. 
You're going to do it like you're going to do a Giles. Remember when we had Giles on from Brew Bar yeah, yeah. Watches? I think so. Yeah, that'd be a bit of fun. Nine Eleven as well. Oh, but I'll, I'll ship it across some sections that I don't want to drive all that way on. But since I've had that discussion with my wife that I'd like to do so, there's a couple of changes that she's requested happens to the car before we do so. All oh, right, I thought you really was divorced. Changes no, to your relationship. She's half a starter. <laughs> she's half a starter on it, right? She's uh, but she's requested air conditioning, which would involve a twelve ah. conversion of the car before I could put the aircon in. So there might be a few. There might, there's a few things that have got to happen there, you know. That's pretty significant. No, not that big a deal. Well, you know, there's about three companies in the US that specialize in aircon in a three, five, six. So I might ship it over and send it to one of those places and get it well, That's what I'll do and get them to fit it and then ship it to LA for when we arrive so it's ready to go. Yeah. Interesting. We have to ship my 912. Well, it doesn't work at the moment, but, you know. We'll come to that in a moment. Yes. And uh, following Rainsport Reunion, we flew to – we drove up to San Francisco and flew out of there to Hong Kong where I spent – a few days, because uh, Hong Kong's like almost directly north of Perth by seven and a half hours in an aircraft. So it's in our time zone. So acclimatising to the time difference in Hong Kong. And sure, Hong Kong's a busy town, but, you know, take putting our feet up a bit, I'll just go down a few shopping expeditions, stay at the hotel, and then uh, coming home without jet lag was a great idea. Brilliant. Uh, and 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 I can't fail to notice that you're in a hotel now. <laughs> I was I was home for about fifty hours, Ajmal, prior to having to for work fly from Perth to Canberra, which is Australia's capital city, based on the east coast. Oh my goodness! However, well, the, the thing. So go on. On those of those fifty hours, I did manage to get the garden cleaned up. After being away, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, the um, obviously we haven't talked about. You met Matt Farah. You had a podcast with him. Did meet Matt Farah. And so, for anybody, go and listen to that. It's part of the Porsche Talk series, and there's a video on YouTube on Mark's channel, Mark and Cars. Um, really interesting. I mean, the I, like I said to you, or when I sent you a message saying, there's a lot of talk about pavements and road quality in this. <laughs> Well, there's very, look, in, in all honesty, there's very little talk about Porsche, okay? The, but the reality yeah. is um, Matt is a, like, for want of a better term, I guess, icon of the auto influencer sphere, you know, globally. Yeah. No doubt whatsoever. Like, sure, he's a polarising personality, but you can be rest assured when he speaks, he speaks his mind. And... I think that's what's generated his audience over the years through, across both YouTube and uh, podcasting, of which he's uh, been amazingly successful and generous with his time, works out of an amazing facility. Actually, for those listeners that are, aren't, aren't aware, actually recorded it in his Smoking Tire studio, both video and um, audio. So, yeah, I think it's I think it turned out quite well as a podcast. It's been incredibly well received by a number of listeners who have uh, reached out to me to give me feedback. So yeah, it was fantastic. You know, so I'm, I was very uh, pleased for the opportunity, and it really was an amazing opportunity that was created through when I decided to start this podcast a couple of years ago now. And I asked Matt to come on, and he said, "You get to a number, and uh, I'll cut." You know, not not only will I go on your podcast, you can come and record it here, which he was a man of his word, which he did. Brilliant. I mean, it was because it was really interesting to hear his perspective on a few things. Um, but the interesting one was about YouTube. It was. He said about YouTube. And yeah, and it was, I think you and I have said this before, haven't we? And, and quite a few other YouTubers have. There's some YouTubers out there who are, you know, they will always be YouTubers because of the thing that they do, you know, Hoovies, Matt Armstrong, yeah. uh, Rattarossa, people like that. They do these project type things that they draw you in and they do them over a series and they will always be good at that. But then there's others who have gone away from it into long form like podcasting um, because it's more 
um i don't know i mean because you know we never did the youtube thing for money though did we so i don't know maybe that's a different thing and we're not doing this for money you know we've, we've joked a lot about you know sponsors and this that whatever but it was never a thing about money it was two guys just talking about something that we love of course. um but from what he said about you know that he's kind of done with it and uh and how you know, he used to have a team of people and then it ended up being him and all of the editing. And he, he didn't feel like he was getting that. I don't know. He just he, he just didn't get that satisfaction out of it. And I think we, we've kind of said the same thing. So that was really interesting. And I love the whole conversation. It was, you know, it was like you had to get him warm him up before he properly started talking about himself because it was about him. And it's, he's not used to doing that. Yeah. And he's normally the one sitting in the seat I was. Yeah. So yeah, look. I also met his his, um, his co-host Zach Clapman, who's a oh nice, yeah, very friendly guy. Like they were, they had another pod. You you may notice in the podcast towards the end, he says, "I've only got a few minutes left." It's because he actually had a podcast. Yeah. Um, some podcast guests arrived, ready to step into the seat that I was vacating. So, and that was on a Sunday. So he's hustling. You know what I mean? So it's. Mm. The days of the week mean nothing to him in his role with doing what he does. Yeah, and 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 even more, kind of kudos to him for making the time. Yeah, was, like, like like I said in the in the podcast, I was grateful for the opportunity and uh, his time. And look, I feel that it's uh, actually it's boosted the uh, image of our own podcast by having him as a guest on it through the feedback I've received from people who we weren't on their radar. Oh, brilliant. No, that's always good to hear. Because at the end of the day, it's not, again, it's not that we're trying to, it's, it's just trying to reach an audience that you can engage. And you know, when I put something on uh, Instagram, for example, and people message me, and it's people, I feel like I know them. Um, and, and I only know them through Instagram. And, you know, I had... Um, uh, I exchanged a few messages with somebody who said, oh, I, I come over from the US to uh, London for work. Uh, perhaps you grow a beer sometime. Look, I go, dude's got 912. Yes, of course I want to have a beer. Please don't murder me. <laughs> hey, hey, you, of course you want to have a beer and he's got a 912. The, uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, exactly, that's a bonus. Um, on, on that, I actually, when I was in LA, the day before I caught up with Matt, I got up very early in the morning and to drive Angelis Crest Highway. Oh, and hang on! What this was in this Mustang. was in the Mustang, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six a.m. Sun up, roof down, living large. Right, it was a nice experience. Great, great road. I can see why it has the reputation it does. And you you may recall uh, our podcast with. Uh, Andy and James from Kerbin Canyon. Andy said, yep. "When you go, you got to drive it." He's right. It was amazing, but look, I got up a certain distance and the road was closed off for whatever reason. So I turn around as I come back. There's a a layaway car park to the side, and there's a nine nine two GD three touring and a nine eight one GT four pulled up with two guys out there talking to each other. It's like, hang on, I better pull in and have a talk to these guys. These, these, look, like, <laughs> these look like my type of people. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, I made some new friends uh, who, um, so it's uh, Josh from Flat Six Memories on Instagram, who does an amazing job on Instagram with his posts. If you don't follow him, check him out. He is, you know, he just does some great stuff. And the other gentleman was, I think, Derek Lane, um, of memory, uh, he's yeah, and he's got a one of one PTS uh, green. I think he said Brewster green was the name of the color. His nine eight one GD four, and I stopped and looked at it. I thought, hang on, this is this is unnatural. This has to be wrapped or something. But no, it's a one of one PTS that he ordered brand new. Oh wow! He's actually a awesome. um, one of the producers of. Uh, Top Gear USA. So oh, nice. Yeah, so it was, it was fascinating to trip over these people up on the mountain, you know, and uh, yeah, it was a great experience to 
again to do we need to get him on? Do we need to get him on? Oh look, I've I've got a list of potential guests. Yeah. One of which is going to very much be your responsibility in the very near future, who is a racing icon in his own right, who's who's only su- only superseded by an accomplishment by what his father did as a racing driver of Porsche. So we will uh, talk about him in more depth in a future episode. Oh, I think I know who that is. So we'll uh, – and he was – yeah, he was quite keen. I don't have them av- – I wonder if I can. Let me get. I've got some sound bites from Rensport reunion. I spoke to a couple of people. Would you like to hear them now? Yes. I, yes. I think it'll work okay. You might recall Cameron Healy number. Yes. Yes. Okay. So Cameron, how's the weekend going? Uh, it's an incredible weekend here. That so many passionate Porsche people. Um, I'm driving the 46 SL. Uh, Rod Emery and I are splitting the four exhibition lap. Uh, that you know, over the you know these four days, yes, and then I'm driving three race cars: a 77 911 RSR, a 68 911 S, ex Bruce Jennings, who was a famous American driver, yes, and then my my old Cooper Porsche Pooper uh, in the Gaboon Cup, and broke a gearbox in the 68 911 S, but my mechanic had a 912 old 912 gearbox in his garage been sitting there for 20 years so he went up and got it last night and brought it back and put it in and i'm gonna go out with it it's a street street gearbox but i'll drive around with it fantastic thanks for your time today yeah so that was cam healy yeah got a couple of others here see whether or not these uh come across it should be fine let's have a listen so i'm here with uh aaron at brumos aaron tell us what do you do here so i actually help manage the cars and we have about 74 cars in the collection and so me, another guy, and two part-time guys to make sure everything's running and driving all, all the time. So we've uh, brought five cars here this week to Ritzport. Brought our 71 914.6, the uh, 917.10, the 935, our Pikes Peak car that uh, David Donahue set the Porsche record with at Pikes Peak, and then the uh, 2017 RSR that Porsche raced the uh, Brumos livery in 2018 with. Fantastic. And uh, the question we all want to know, how do you get a job like that? <laughs> well, I went to school for automotive restoration, so that's kind of where I, my background came in was business and automotive restoration. And we took a school trip uh, to the Brumos collection. I met the owner and the manager at the time and great people, and they wanted my young enthusiasm. So it worked out as a huge blessing. Fantastic. Thanks very much for your time today. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure. So that was Aaron from the Brumos collection. The final one, Justin Bell, Derek Bell's son. Yes. So I'm here with Justin Bell. G'day, Justin. How are you today? It's great, mate. Yeah, really good. Yeah, what's been the highlight of your weekend here so far? Do you know what? I think it's not just seeing the cars that made the history, right, of Porsche from the beginning. It's also almost as the drivers that match to them in every era. I mean, it's unbelievable, right? You've got David Piper who lost his leg making the Steve McQueen movie. You've got Brian Redman. Yeah, all the way through to my dad and Jackie Ix and now Dane, you know, Dane Cameron and uh, all the guys, Smart Lieb and all the, the, the ladies factory drivers. So it's about the people for me. Yeah, fantastic. That's why I come as well. Um, you've done a few laps around this circuit, I understand? Yeah, I've, I've had a few. I've, I've won some and I've wrecked some. So <laughs> as most of us, not this weekend. Um, I, I could have had a drive, didn't work out uh, with my schedule as host, but... Uh, it does make you realise it's a great, the perfect place for Rensport reunion. The track's great, everyone loves it, and everyone loves being at the great restaurants, right? I mean, it's it's a good place to be. It's um, it's a great reason to come to California. Yeah, I mean, California has it all. It also has all the problems, but you know, for this weekend, it's uh, it's the place to be. And let's face it, they're not our problems when we're visiting. No, I live here, so they are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks very much for your time today. My pleasure, mate. No worries. Yeah, good. So the, having the opportunities there to talk to uh, just some people at Rensport, you could hear a lot of the motor racing in the background going on the whole time. Um, yep. It was you know, just seeing the motor cars, Ajmal, like you're seeing it was raining in the morning on the Saturday, the second day that I was there, and there are guys warming up the engines to go out in – 935s and 934.5s, so like 800 horsepower monsters with 
notorious liftoff oversteer in the wet, and they're not on wet tyres. These are the world's biggest on slicks. Things, you know what I mean? Like, and, yeah, we're talking cars like Moby Dick are out there, and uh, you know the Interscope car, and the, like these cars are realistically they're probably million dollar motor cars. Yeah, they're all cars with history. Wow. Like I think I th- off memory, I think I overheard someone say who was more knowledgeable than me that there was something like sixteen. Of the 19 Porsche Le Mans wins, the cars, 16 of the cars were there. Wow. You know, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, the outright wins and getting used. I tell you, on that point, I'll tell you what really opened my mind. And I'm going to be honest, shattered my rose tinted glasses to somewhat. Okay. Was they had a, a, they had four cars out on track at one time. It was, the current 963 Le Mans Porsche was out there. Yeah. There was a 919 Le Mans Porsche, you know, the one that broke the Nürburgring record after all those years. Yes. Which was a Le Mans winner as well, which was then modified to just go out and break all the track records everywhere. There yeah. was a GT3 yeah. RS, 992 GT3 RS, you know, the Hot Wheels car that. Yeah. You know, I'm aspiring to. Yeah. And the fourth car <laughs> was that new GT3 RSR Rensport edition, which I'm sure you've seen all over social media. Yep. yep. Now, they drove about 10 laps, okay, of, of Laguna Seca. And they rolled out in the order of what I what I think they thought was the performance. Mm. Okay. Firstly, GD3 RS, amazing track car for the road, incredible. Yeah. 520-odd horsepower, something yep. like that. The 963 puts out about 680 horsepower. So it's a it's a considerable jump, right, as well as the aero that goes with mm-hmm. that. Ajmal lapped the GD3 RS on its fourth lap. Whoa. Wow. Was this was it raining? Nope. Dry track. Wow. That, that's nuts. That's horrifying, isn't it? You know, because you think GD3 yeah. RS, that is some serious business, you know, like they've developed that car to the nth degree. Yeah. Oh my god, by the fourth lap. That's amazing. Right. Oh well, you said you mentioned in the weather, actually. Uh, I heard it was pretty Bad. Oh, look, it absolutely pissed down on Saturday morning for an, an hour and a half, right? But early, okay. by 11, you would never know it rained. All mm-hmm. oh, right, okay, so not too bad. No. Oh, cool. But it's, oh, wow. It's, so, Calif- it's Californians whinging about the rain. That's what it is, you know? Ah right, okay. Because because I did I did see a few things saying oh the the rain is terrible, it's biblical, it's this that whatever. But then you know whenever you saw, you kind of barely saw anything on social media of the actual rain. Yes, yes, it was because you it know, was quite sunny, maybe a little bit of cast. Look, it yeah. came down hard for um, a short period of time. All right, okay. Now what a, you but, know the, now also what was quite amazing when I talked about those cars there, the. 963 current Le Mans car lapped the 919, the old Le Mans car, in about seven laps. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry. So ignore, it's, ignore that noise. <laughs> the so that was that was quite amazing too. Yeah, you know, anyway, these are just some observations that are coming at me at random that I'm remembering from that event. Now, I you sent me through a photo of your garage today. Let's talk about that. It's 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 the first photo that actually looks like a garage. No, it's just looks like a big wall. <laughs> oh wait, there's, there's like the second photo that I say you. There's like there's a piece of wood there, <laughs> <laughs> which is you know the building. Um, actually, it's today. So the groundwork's obviously on, on three months into it, a ton of money, um, but the building has arrived today. Great. So the guys turn up 
at what 7 30 in the morning it's all kind of flat pack oak frame building and i think by the time they leave tonight the building will be up minus the roof and doors well that's exciting that is super exciting uh and then now i don't know if you know but we've been having a proper indian summer here it's Lovely. been sort of you know, record-breaking October temperatures. It was 26 degrees Celsius yeah, last that. weekend. Um, and But it gets autumnal from tomorrow. It starts raining. Sure. So I'm going to have this garage with no roof. Um, and also, uh, I need to think about, so I think we talked about this before, I need to talk about what I'm going to think about what I'm going to do on the floor. And I'm thinking the you know, epoxy, finish do it as straight away uh-huh. before you put anything in it so you don't have to clean the floor yep. again don't do anything till you've done the floor yeah exactly because and it's quite shiny so it's polished concrete so you know it's not going to have any dings in it any digs in it um but i want to go for a, a, a quite a strong color because i don't want it to be dark gray everyone does it dark gray right and do it light um no i don't want gray uh, and then, then I thought, should I do it white? I thought that's too that's that's too far. And then I went blue, and I thought, oh, there's a certain blue that that could look quite good. And uh, and my wife from behind her book, while I was talking out loud, she went, but it's going to clash with the color of your car. And I thought, oh, shit, she's oh, right. Well, it'll, uh, it'll contrast with the color of your car. <laughs> yes, I don't know if it will. Then okay. um, so don't I need to do that. Glitter, just don't put any glitter flakes in it. It should be fine. Yeah, it's not. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it uh, PTS. Um, but but the uh, it, so it's it's a two part kind of uh, epoxy, isn't it? You mix the hardener in. Um, so I've just got to work out how to do it. You know, it's not a case of just pouring it onto the floor. I've got to go around the edge to paint the edge, then pour it on the floor roller, and then I think it's two coats. Yeah, it depends on the product. But I am going to redo my garage floor. Mm-hmm. Right, because I've had some areas where hot tires have lifted the epoxy, right? It's it's not a perfect product, right? And mm. I'm going to um, grind off what's on there, and I'm going to oh, put, wow. I'm going to put um, ceramic tiles on the garage floor. Ceramic tiles? They're, cheap, they're cheaper than epoxy, Ashmar. Are they? Well, like tiles, like floor tiles, yep. like you would put in a kitchen. Yep. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to do it with like, you know, nine yeah, they'd have to be big. tiles, big monsters. Shiny. Um, yeah, probably gloss. Might even get those ones that have like, you know, each tile's got like a, a textured finish around the edge. So if it is wet, I don't go ass up when I'm walking through the garage. All right. Okay. No, I don't know. See, this is the thing that's going to bother me now. I'm going to be sort of do some research. It's going to go around in my head. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some research because that I like the sound of that. So I want it to be a crisp finish, and on the but I also want to be podcasting from there. Ooh. So and and it's at the end of the garden, so I'd have to extend network there. The power obviously has got to go anyway. I've got a, a like a tan leather armchair that's surplus to requirements in the house that needs to go over there. I might, you know, put a rug at one end. Uh, at, and I was at my sister's house the other day and she said, oh, you gave my children a PlayStation and do you want it back? And, and I'm there going, that was 22 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and she went, yeah, it's like a PS2, I think it says on it. And she handed it over. There's a ton of games, and there's a PSP, which was the handheld one. There's one of those, and the PlayStation Two. Obviously, it needs a SCART. So I got a SCART converter thing and plugged it into my TV by HDMI. Uh, Scott, you know, a SCART connector on the back that you know yeah. video recorders used to connect to television. They they had multiple pins, oh, okay. a funny shaped connector, and. Um, so I got a converter to plug, so I could plug it via HDMI into my television. And you know, because it can't render the picture properly, it's like, oh, my, you know, migraine-inducing. 
Um, and then at the same time, my brother-in-law, who had our old television, which was a Sony Bravia from 2007, and he went, oh, it's surplus requirements. Does anyone want it? And I went, has it got a scar connection on the back? <laughs> and he, he said, yes. So I have that. And I'm thinking, do I need to set that up in the garage? And at the same time, I'm thinking, when am I ever going to do that? I'm not a gamer. So I'm 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 just hoarding stupid things. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. You've seen photos of my garage. I'm not innocent. <laughs> well, the house is packed with crap that needs to go to the garage. But you know, I can't I just can't wait to have my 912 back, but I can't have the 912 until the floor's done. Hey, let's just talk about the 912 for a moment. Since our last podcast, some month ago, plus, yeah, you've had the 912 out. Uh, quite a lot, yes. Um so one of the things that I did, I took it out and what did I do? I I put a roof rack on it. Yes. Um, which I was really pleased with. It's the vintage speed one, but the the little rubber suckers, they don't sit quite right, so I might need to adjust it or take them off. Um, and then I went to put put my ignition one, two, three distributor on. Yeah, yeah. And and I thought, hang on, this, that doesn't fit properly. But also for some reason, it just started running really well without changing it. But, you know, bearing in mind I hadn't driven it for like 11 months. Sure. And then uh, so I didn't actually do anything to it. Um, can I, and can then, I throw an uh, idea here for you? I, I remember you showing me your one, two, three ignition in the packet, you know, it's in a previous podcast on our, whilst during our video between each other. And I remember mine came with a secondary part that was like a collar that was an adapter that for it to fit into the block. Are you missing that? I'm missing that. Yeah, it didn't fit. It, it didn't because the second rubber seal, because the, the stem's longer, mm-hmm. the second rubber seal sticks out too much. And, and the guy who bought it off, he's telling me, well, actually, it should fit, but it needs that spacer. There's a special collar spacer type thing that's perfect for the 912 slash 36 yeah. case, you know? But the website didn't have it. So that was really annoying. So I, I didn't do that. But um, so Bart was over yes, yes, in sir. the UK. <laughs> And he was over in the UK and he said, I'm doing this colour book. Can I take some photos of you in your car? And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'll get to meet Bart. So, you know, he's been on twice. Yeah, sure. Um, and so I headed off to Cafe in a Machine, which is like an hour and 20 minutes away. <laughs> I just thought, just got in the car, headed off and it was driving okay. And, and there's, a, there's a road called the A34, which is like a, a dual carriageway two lanes, 70 mile an hour limit. Um, so I, it takes me about 40 minutes to get to that road. So I'm going through the country lanes, have a great time. And I hit this road and I just come onto it, accelerate hard down the slip road. I come on and you know, when you go, hit someone, had to break down. <laughs> Heart just started fluttering. And luckily there was a lay by, otherwise I would have caused chaos. I would have been on local news. And I pulled into this lay-by, and I had to call Bart and say, Bart, I've just broken down. I'm, I'm about an hour away. And, um, well, 45 minutes away. And uh, so he was very patient. And obviously, he was staying at Caffeine and Machine. He's oh. hanging out there. And then I have to call the AA, which is the Breakdown Recovery Service in the UK. So the guy comes out. And I know what it is. I know the fuel pump stops. Um, and, you know, I'm giving it the old find the wheel spanner and give it a whack. <laughs> and it's it's not the it's not the mechanical one that's uh, it's yours on your 356 are you using the mechanical one yep, or have I you got have. a secondary one I, I have both so, i use i use an electric one to prime the carbs right as right a, i've got a push button but it doesn't run on that pump it runs on all ah, right okay see mine is um uh an electric electronic one yep and it's remote, and it just—I could see that it had stopped, and the and the fuel filter was empty. Yep. So it and it was just something while I was sat there, it was just trickling through. I started it back up. It started up, used that what was in the filter, and then died again. So the guy came, and I thought, shit, I'm just gonna have to. Uh, he's gonna have to recover it back. Yep. To my house, and the guy—he was quite a young guy. He just sat there, took it apart. Um, and he said the connector is not properly working. So he just put a little bend in it 
to get it going. And then it started overfueling. But he said, look, it works. I would advise you to go straight home. Which he said, did. if you break down, <laughs> well, he said, if you break down again and it's for the same problem, then, I, you know, you call us again. You'll have to pay the recovery fee, which is hundreds of pounds. And I thought, stop it. I'm going. <laughs> so I go, <laughs> I go, I go and see Bart, uh, which is really cool to see him, uh, hang out with him. Uh, this guy, one of his friends, guy on Instagram, um, if you look him up on Black Vince. And he's got, he turned up in his 912 that he'd driven over from Holland. Amazing. Um, and, and you know, when, when you look at it and it's really patinated, it, you know, it's amazing. It's got the, it, it's got the group four wheels that I'm, I'm going to put on mine that I've already got. Um, and then he, he lifts the hood and I've got, that's not a 912 because it's got a 911 engine in it. Ah. <laughs> and you know, when you go, yeah, but what's the 912? It's a 911 with a 356 engine in it. But if you've got a 912 with a 911 engine, it's basically a 911. It's a 911. It's a 911.5, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and then Bart did that thing where he's he, some young lad was talking to Bart about his camera that it's worth like you know 50 grand or something. Sure. He said, "Oh my god, that's an amazing camera. It's worth like 50 grand." And Bart's you know handing it to him and saying, "Oh yeah, I've looked at it." And the guy's like, "I'm really scared to." Uh, drop it and I'm talking to somebody else I'm just hearing this conversation going on behind me and we're in the in like there's a wood section a caffeine machine and um, and Bart's taking it back off him so you've got to treat it with confidence and he just shouts Ajmal and he throws this camera at me oh no <laughs> and, you know, and I'm like ah but thankfully I did not drop it <laughs> But it was really good to see him. Um, he went off up to Birmingham to the custard factory. They took amazing photos there. If you look at Bart's profile, you'll see them on Instagram. Um, obviously, he's doing this um, color book, and um, we're going to get him back on. Okay. So we need to get him back on quick. So at the moment, he's in Barrett's. Um, So when he gets home, we're going to get him on to talk about... Um, um, what he's doing next yeah fantastic um and and the, and the other thing that i i don't know if i told you about is um i had some work done on my 996 last i heard um, you're patching up exhaust still the exhaust no the 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 exhaust tips are now proper oem 996 exhaust tips what work um, have you had done uh, I've had the lower coffin arms on the back replaced. Oh, it's just stopped making noise. Yeah, because it was creaking so badly. And, you know, when, when I drove it, anyone who got in the car, they went, oh, my God, you know, your car is like, obviously looks crusty on the outside. But they all said, you know, it's quite tight. It doesn't rattle and it, it feels quite good over the bumps and things like that. Um, so I've had those changed. And it's now really, really highlighted that the front knee doing. <laughs> it's now horrific because before it was evenly done. I could drive it, push it through the bends. It was fantastic. And now I drive it. It's bouncing all over the place on the front. And oh, no. Jack did it. And he, he was in a rush to get to Goodwood Revival. And, uh, and I needed it back to go and get my 912 to go and see Bart. So when I got it off him, um he wasn't there he'd left the key with somebody but obviously he both of the um toe adjustment bolts broke so he had to change them and he was he did not send me polite text messages when that was happening and he said jesus christ you need to sell this car but you know it <laughs> it's stuck on my left now broken bolts um but he did it but i but when i went back you could obviously see one of the wheels was pointing in the wrong direction yeah i was about to say it's probably needs a wheel alignment as well no doubt yeah but i couldn't get i couldn't book it anywhere i went to about four or five places and they all said oh we can't do that car um so that was painful but having that done it it, it's now really highlighted the fact the front need needs doing and and i haven't i've barely driven it i really want to go out and drive it but it's just just sat there so uh i'm gonna give it a good blast in the next few days i i need to drive go on um like a 500 mile round trip for work 
and I'm thinking I might take it. Yeah, okay. But so that'll be a, a bit of a bit of a journey. Maybe I don't know. I was gonna say I'll, maybe I'll make a video, but I can't bother. No. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, Matt Farah. Yeah, exactly. And um I think it's more the I think it's the the engagement because I've there were videos I used to watch every now and again, but I, I hardly spend any time on YouTube. I don't know about you. Very, yeah, it's very little. Exactly. So if I'm going somewhere in the car, I can listen to a podcast. If I'm going for a walk, I try and go for a like a 40 minute walk at least every day. I can I can do that. It, you know, there's always an opportunity to listen to a, a, a podcast, but I can't. Um, videos, it, it feels now it feels like dead time. I don't know why. I feel like time is more precious than ever. I've, so, I've, um, I've had quite good feedback about putting the Matt Farrow video up. It's the first video I've put up in mm. a long time on my channel. So that's been um, well received. But when, um, I've got enough video footage i think to create a video from my ren sport experience mm -hmm. but as i do have quite a bit of footage from my Le Mans experience and i may post something on youtube because i've actually been asked by the porsche club of western australia to do a presentation about both events so I may put together oh, cool. something anyway that I can use as a presentation format, you know what I mean? So, But that may end up, in all reality, Ashmael, that may end up being a PowerPoint with some video inserted here and there as opposed to a postable video on YouTube, you know? I'm, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I know what you mean. It just, it, it kind of, I feel like it's, yeah, I don't get the same satisfaction out of it and I don't get the same... I don't. I mean, you still get engagement because you, you know, we get quite a lot of comments, which I like. Um, and I, I like, apart from the odd one, you know, I have, I don't get that many, that much abuse. Um, apart from there's three or four people, same people who send me abuse all the time. Uh, whether that's, and it, but the thing is, it's not, it's not like you know, it's not um, heckling or banter or anything like that. Yeah, it's actually yeah. serious abuse, and uh, and and I feel like that. Not yet, anyway, is happening on Instagram. Um, but yeah, I've, 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 I've pretty much disengaged from any any um, anything at all on Facebook because of the amount of I've copped it on Facebook. I don't cop it on Instagram, yeah. and all my Facebook posts are replications of my Instagram posts. But I don't actually go onto Facebook anymore because I've you know I've copped it pretty hard on there from some uh, naysayers of the content I provide. Yeah, it's not, I think it's not enough for people to just say, well, actually, that's not con content for me. Yeah, it's that's more. Right. It's a bit dis it, it saddens me a little bit, you know what I mean? But it's, yeah, I don't see too. the point of it, but I know it's them, it's not me. But, you know, I'd rather put myself in a position where I have to make the decisions on whether or not to respond or not respond. I just, just don't engage at all with it. You know, I just don't even go on there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think that, for people's mental health, that's the right thing to do. Because you could just get cut off about every single thing that yeah, someone of course, says. Of course. But um, but at the end of the day, I know the people who want to see it. I know the people who want to hear it. Um, and that's always nice. And I've just remembered I did not give away the cayenne pen. <laughs> the cayenne pen. Uh, oh, no. I've just remembered why why didn't I do that? Oh, Dude, okay, yeah. me, message... Let's talk just Porsche news for a second. Other than Rensport, new KN got released this week or last week. I can't believe you didn't get an invite to go to the launch. I was going to say, do we care? Oh no, well, do I care? No, I don't. <laughs> I got a I, I got a message from um from a, the Porsche dealer in Perth asking if I was interested in uh, reviewing it. And you said, yeah. No, no. I, I said there could be value in doing it for the podcast, but I'd rather Ajmal did it for us in the UK. Let's go. Let's do it. So, yeah, of course, you made it Porsche Center. 
down the road from you. And uh, yeah, you they'll, can. They'll, they'll get you. They'll get you behind the wheel. You'll be fine, mate. Yep, Tina, if you're listening. <laughs> hey, it's very late. Not. It's very late where I am in the world right now, and I've been up since two thirty in the morning below my uh, home t- that time at home. So I, I would wouldn't mind continuing this conversation again in our next episode. Okay, but I'm going to get. Um... Bob booked in ASAP. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, back from anyone who's got any feedback with regards to this episode or the previous one with uh, Matt. And anyone out there who is uh, interested, please think about following Ajmal and myself on our Instagram for any sort of feedback and communication. Follow us on your favourite podcast platform. Thanks, everyone, for listening to Porsche Talk. Thank you very much, Ajma. Thank you. What happened to uh, our mate at Group Four Wheels? Sorry? What happened to our mate at Oh, yeah, Jonathan. Yes. Um, He's flaky. He's flaky as hell. Can't you – listen, I reckon you should just do an interview with him for for an episode. Yeah. I want him on with us, though, because, you know – I told you, didn't I? Uh, Jeff, home built Jeff. Yeah. Wasn't happy with him. Yeah. Like, really unhappy because yeah. for his Alferrari, I, for Alpha. He, he and I hung out together for the whole of Red Sport. Oh, nice. And I yeah, was, I heard he was going. Yeah. And also, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Josh from Wrench. No, sorry, Mike from Wrench. Oh, yeah, yeah, they were hanging out quite a lot, weren't they? I saw that. Because you didn't post a lot on Instagram. I was starting to wonder if you were actually there. I was – I had a lot going on. I, I mean, was, sometimes it's – There's a lot of this. I, a lot of – I was doing a lot of this, you know what I mean? Like when I said 80 to 100 people approached me about that, I actually wore a Porsche Talk podcast T-shirt. <laughs> right? And Brilliant. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic because people come up and, you know, out of the woodwork from everywhere coming to see me, you know what I mean? Which was really good. I really, it was, um, oh, you know, the feedback I had was awesome. amazing. You know, this husband and wife from New York that were over, that drove their 356 over for to uh, Monterey oh. for, you know, they were in their 70s. Oh, wow. Right? And, amazing. Um, and uh, what was their name? Rudy and someone. I can't remember the wife's name. <laughs> Anyway, they're old um, old krauts that lived in uh, Brooklyn, right? And um, amazing. And they'd had they've had their car for like forty three years or something, and the, wow. they own about half a dozen cars, Porsches. But anyway, um, the uh, husband said, "Yeah, we, we you know we we both listen to your podcast every every episode. We really enjoy it, and um, it's the only Porsche podcast we do that my wife really enjoys this." But, that we have that my wife really enjoys listening to as well. Oh, awesome. That, that that makes me happy. Yeah. Because um it's it's just that kind of feedback, you know, and, and people listen and people contribute. I like that. Um so yeah, excellent. No, that that that's really affirms yeah. it's, it's, it's such a shame you weren't able to come over for it because you you would have loved it, you know what I mean? Oh, it would have been because you just saying that about the lack of photos i'm exactly the same when i went to see bart uh i think i didn't take any photos i got uh, while i was there i've got shot. hundred i think i got like 450 shots right between my two cameras but it's just mm. it's the posting process it takes it's too clunky when you're trying to talk to people yeah i don't want to do it there and then i don't want to interrupt it but, and you know yeah. what i'm really conscious of Going to Ren Sport's been a long term goal for me, Ajmal, right? I wanted to be in the moment. I didn't want to be there yep. for the sake of recording. I wanted to be there for the sake of experience. Yeah, same, same here. Every car show that I go to, I end up forgetting to take photos. I don't post anything. I might do one reel right at the end of it. Um, but during the day, the time, you're too busy looking at stuff and you're too busy talking to people. And I don't really want to do quality stuff. posts either. Yeah. It's, exactly. Whereas people, lots of people fire off stuff a million. And I can't do it. Like, you know, if like I put together a reel, right, or something like that, it usually takes me a good 15 to 20 minutes to 
patch stuff together and do what I want to do and think about by hashtagging and all that sort of bullshit, right? How these kids do it so quickly. Look, and I don't know whether or not I'm getting better engagement as a result of it. If I just fired the shit off instantly all the time, I'd probably be fine. I probably wouldn't make any difference to the outcome. But I'm doing it for me as much as anything as a yeah as a record of this time this moment in my life you know that i've got for ever and a day on instagram on my profile yeah oh god yeah and i think that yeah it's a, it, you're right it's about being there being present um because otherwise you are literally just there like, to fire off photos yeah I, 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 it's like when i go to a concert and i watch people film the thing through their phone i think to myself what are you doing yeah exactly because uh, yeah, because when I went to um, see Pulp and I took that one tiny snippet of three yeah, seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I didn't take another, I didn't take another photo of it just because it was you, you're you're there to listen to the music, to watch what's happening on stage, and everybody around you, you're watching, you end up watching other people, yeah, because they're just watching the whole thing through their phone, and you go, are you really going to look at that when you get home? You know, there's probably a better recording out there already. <laughs> not probably <laughs> so there is. yeah exactly so anyway i should let you get sleep and i've got to go and do some work yeah go on then go make some millions you're gonna spend it at vegas i'll probably just come back owing it no no just go put it on red you'll be fine it'll cover the cost of the garage put it all on red yeah yeah that's that's it red floor oh interesting I, you know what? I reckon the sky. I reckon a sky blue would look fucking mint with your nine twelve. No, it's not sky blue. It's not. It's not striking enough. Because I went yellow. Yeah, I'm talking about like yellow. a t-shirt blue. Oh, I don't know. No, no, it's not right. I need. I need. I've got some thinking to do, but I need to do it fast hey, so I can get it done. Check out, the, check out. I'm deadly serious. Check out the tiles. Okay, it's, I am. I am. That's all I can think about. Yes, great of mine that I didn't do it to start with. Okay. Leave it with me. I'll let you know. Great. Right, we'll talk soon. Great to see you again. You too. Take it easy. Yeah, bye. Bye.